Hey guys, welcome back to my homeschool channel. Today I have a super fun video for you. We are going to be talking about five unconventional homeschool hacks, ways that you can help keep your kids stay engaged and have fun while learning from home. And I have a super fun twist for you. This video is being done in collaboration with Jessica from over at Relatable Motherhood. And so in just a few minutes, you're going to be hearing her top five hacks here on my channel. And she is going to be sharing my top five hacks over on her channel. I've never done a collaboration on YouTube before, so I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be really fun. I think you guys are really going to enjoy hearing from Jessica. So let me introduce her to you guys just a little bit before I share her video with you. Jessica and I met over on Instagram. She has an Instagram page, Relatable Motherhood, and we just connected with each other in messages over there. And when we found out we both had YouTube channels that are trying to uplift the Christian homeschool motherhood community, we decided to maybe try out a fun collaboration here on YouTube to get our best tips out to all of you homeschool moms. Jessica is a homeschool mother of three. She lives over in Washington State, which I find really interesting because I'm over here on the East Coast, so I love seeing their lifestyle over there on the West Coast. And her channel is all about the home. She enjoys sharing homemaking, homeschooling. She enjoys sharing about motherhood and about her marriage. She shares vlogs, day in the life videos, and weekly sit down videos to help encourage other moms. Her main goal of her channel is to be relatable to other moms in a way that goes against the current mommy culture of always complaining about your husbands and your kids. So, so you'll hear from her in just a minute. And after you hear from her here, I think you're going to really like what she has to say. And I'd love it if after watching her video here, you would head over to her channel and subscribe to her her channel so you can hear from her more and be encouraged by her. So now that you know who Jessica is, here are her top five unconventional homeschool hacks. Hi, thank you Meg so much for having me on your channel today. I'm really excited about this collaboration and the chance to speak into more moms lives about homeschool. So Meg already gave you an introduction about me, but hi, I'm Jessica. I have three kids that are seven, five, and one year old. So this video is obviously just gonna pertain to my big kids. This is our second full year of homeschool. Okay, I have five unconventional homeschool hacks to share with you today. And I'm just gonna jump right in. The first one that I've done for years and it isn't even exclusive to homeschool. <laughs> I'm laughing because you might laugh. It's everything talks. The pencil can talk. The illustrations on their schoolwork can talk. Maybe a little car that's sitting and watching them do school can talk. So a little preface on that. I taught daycare for five years, so I'm really big on singing and puppets and just making things as fun as I possibly can while still trying to keep everybody focused. I'm still trying to learn that balance, but everything talks is gold. So a more specific example is my son. Sometimes he really doesn't want to do his math worksheet. He gets frustrated and kind of worn out and he doesn't want to do the work. But let's say he has a paper in front of him that's full of subtraction problems and he's having kind of an attitude and he doesn't want to do it. I'll pretend to be the subtraction problems talking to him and I'll say, you'll never figure us out. And like immediately light jumps into his eyes and he's leaning over the paper, yes I will. And I, I have to keep it up to keep him engaged through the whole paper, but every time he gets one right, oh, you figured us out. Don't worry, guys, he'll never figure us out. And it continues on until suddenly we've gone through the whole paper. This just works wonders and it takes the drudgery out of doing book work. I don't do it for every single piece of schoolwork. That would be kind of exhausting, but I pull that trick out a lot. And like I said, it's not even exclusive to homeschool. On Sunday, my daughter didn't want to wear her coat to church and it was really cold and rainy. We live in Washington state. And so I took her coat off the hook and I pretended to be the coat and I said, oh, Gloria, you never wear me. Please, can I go to church with you today? Light in her eyes, she put her coat on and she hugged it and she said, do you want to go for a walk? And I said, yes. And she took the coat for a walk to church. It just works. I don't know. It just works, making everything talk. So my second hack that I do is actually something that happened completely on accident. So my daughter is five and she has been able to read fluently since she was four. She picked it up at my elbow when I was trying and not doing well <laughs> on teaching my oldest to read. She just picked it up at my elbow. And now that we're actually in more formal book work, and it's asking her to practice different reading. She doesn't seem to like the pressure of that. And so we have been running into her not wanting to practice her reading. This was totally a whim on my part. We were sitting, she was frustrated, and I started something new 
and she has coined it sing reading. I brought a book as an example. This is one of our favorites. We got it from the library. You could literally do this for any book. You could put aside any embarrassment or discomfort about singing in front of your children, which if you're homeschooling young children, you should anyway. You can sing anything. So yellow the flower, yellow the seed, yellow and black the buzzing bee. Was that beautiful? Not really. Did my daughter get excited about reading and immediately take the book from me and sing the entire rest of the book? Yes. Kids don't care if you can sing beautifully. What they're thinking is, mom is singing to me. And that's really special. But it was just this neat way of getting her to be excited about reading, kind of mixing things up. And she was practicing her reading in a totally no pressure way. Small side note, if you haven't heard my kids already, they are in the living room right now with their father. We can do our best to keep the oldest two kind of quiet while mom does a video, but the one-year-old, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, so please enjoy the noise. Okay, so the third hack I cannot even actually take credit for. I learned it from Kristen over on Arrows and Applesauce on Instagram. She shared it in her stories one day and it blew my mind and I've been doing it ever since. And that is crossing out stuff or skipping over stuff that your kids have totally mastered. That might seem like a no-brainer thing, but it wasn't for me, so hopefully it won't be for some of you. It just never occurred to me. Like we got the curriculum and I thought we have to do everything that's in the curriculum or there's gonna be gaps in their education and I'm not doing right and everything is going to explode and I just failed. <sighs> it just isn't true. Ever since I started crossing out stuff that my kids have mastered, not that they're complaining about doing or that they don't feel like doing, that's not acceptable but crossing out stuff that they already know, that we've repeated over and over, and at this point they're like, oh, why do I have to do this again? That's the stuff that I've been crossing out. For the most part, that's for my son with math. Math is just something that meshes well with his brain. He just gets it quickly, and he gets frustrated with repeating things. So I know that repetition is important in learning to an extent, and you can just use your mom gut on this, but I will have him repeat a concept like two or three times, and then if it comes up a fourth time and I see he's getting frustrated with the fact that he has to do it and he's completing it like that, then I will go ahead and just start crossing it out from then on. And then occasionally, when if it keeps coming up over and over and over again, I'll have him do it again just to test. Like, is he still, is he retaining this? Does he still totally get this? Usually the answer is yes. There's just something so freeing about that, about knowing that you don't have to do every single thing that's in the curriculum you got just because it's part of the curriculum. The fourth hack that I have may not even be a hack, but we don't actually sit down and do all of our homeschool in one shot. We actually break up our learning throughout the entire day. So for breakfast, while the kids are eating breakfast, I sit with them at the table and I'll read our Bible and our read aloud, and then sometimes our history read aloud if I still have their attention. And then we break. They play, I work on my computer, I have an admin job that I do part-time from home, and then we come back and we have a snack, baby goes down for a nap, and that is when we jump into language arts and math. And lately, it's actually just been language arts that we do during that time. And then we break, and then they play, and I get house chores done, and then we come back for lunch. They do lunch, and if I wasn't able to get to the history read aloud in the morning, if it's a day that I'm doing history with them, then I'll do it at lunchtime with them while they're eating. I find that read alouds work best when they're, when they're eating or when they're sitting down and coloring. And then after lunch, we'll do math. Math is done, and that is basically the bulk of our homeschool, now that I think on it. Yeah, and then after that, it's play, and then we have, we're kind of involved in a lot of things right now. So we have baseball, we have Awana, if you're familiar with that, um, and we've joined a wild and free hiking group, and I try to plan at least one play date with friends a week. And so usually the, the second half of our day is us being out and socializing with people. But our day is just broken up. I've just kind of let go of the feeling that I have to make homeschool look like public school at home. For the most part, I still struggle with that sometimes, but overall, I'm like, we don't have to sit down at nine in the morning and not get up again until all of our school is done. Number one, it just doesn't work. I tried. <laughs> and number two, it just isn't necessary. So part of the homeschool life is that we get to make homeschool work for our life. And we want this to be an enjoyable experience, not this like awful drudgery, um, stressful thing that we're just forcing on our kids every single day. So breaking up our learning throughout the day and kind of planning to do like the bulk of where they need to listen 
while they're busy eating or coloring has been working really well for our family. Okay, and then the last hack that I have is playdates take priority within reason. I have been reading Dorenda Wilson's The 4-Hour Homeschool Day, um, or The 4-Hour School Day, I think it's called, and she had this amazing quote and it totally just like light bulb moment for me. She said that rather than making our lives revolve around homeschool, we should make homeschool revolve around our lives. And I just thought that was really amazing. And I feel like I've been kind of doing that on accident. So how this looks practically is say I want to get together with my friend um, whose kids totally get along with my kids. And I'd really like to foster that relationship um, for, for me and for the kids. Um, but she's only available on Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to say yes to that. And we're going to move stuff around. And we're going to do our school around when we go on that play date. And I do this a lot. Like for our hiking group, it's never really a set time. So I plan our homeschool around when those hikes are scheduled because it's really a priority to me that my kids have that socialization and that I have that socialization with other moms who are doing the same thing that I'm doing. Because if there's anything I've learned in being a mother in general, is being alone is like the worst, the worst thing ever for you. So playdates take priority. I don't say no to a playdate if it's like a Wednesday afternoon, just because I feel like, oh no, like we have to protect our school time. We can move school around to whenever we want in the day. That is the beauty of homeschool. Um, I guess the danger there is having too many playdates or like overbooking yourself, which I have been guilty of in this past couple weeks, and not ever getting to the school. That's not good. But overall, just prioritizing relationships and socialization um, and getting out in nature, it just does wonders. We, we joined that hiking group and our first hike was actually a couple of weeks ago. It was a big hike and I had planned that we would do school after we came home from the hike. But it was a really big hike. and. We're very new to the hiking world. And I thought, I ended up thinking like, this blows the whole day. Like there's no way we're gonna be able to get to school. I'm exhausted, they've gotta be exhausted. We're just gonna have to call it a day, um, which sometimes is fine. But we ended up getting home, baby went down for a nap, everybody got cleaned up and comfortable and fed and stuff. And then we sat down at the table and I just, everyone was fine and tired, but fine. And I ended up pulling out our homeschool and we had the one of the best homeschool days that we've had in a long time i had like weird extra patience and i just felt kind of good and happy they were more engaged and happy and i think it's because we just had that cup filled of like friendship fellowship getting out in nature moving our bodies i just think we had that cup filled and i it was like one of those cups i didn't even realize needed to be filled in order for us to have a great homeschool day so that is a huge reason why I prioritize playdates and being part of groups and stuff. So those are my five unconventional homeschool hacks. I hope that some of them were news to you um, and that some of them gave you some food for thought. Thank you again to Meg for letting me hang out on your channel today. If you wanna hear more from me on stuff like motherhood and homemaking and marriage and homeschool, I post every Monday and Thursday over on my channel, which Meg will totally have linked for you. Thank you again for watching. And Thank I'll you see guys you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Jessica and I hope you learned something from her hacks that she gave you that can encourage you in your homeschool journey with your kids. If you want to hear my top five hacks, be sure to head over to her channel. She posted a video today that's similar to this one where I share my top five homeschool hacks as well. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more collaboration between me and Jessica or which homeschool hack between the two videos you found to be the most helpful or if you have a favorite homeschool hack that can encourage some other moms watching this video and reading the comments, please share below. One of my main goals here on the channel is to encourage other homeschool moms and build up this homeschool community. And I think one of the best ways we can do that is by interacting in the comments and by you guys sharing your ideas and thoughts and opinions too. I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you head out and I will see you next time. Happy homeschooling.